I'm joined here by Stephen Kirk at the ICC 2014. He's just given a stimulating keynote on the subject of standardization and also done a very nice uh, overview of uh, next generation mobility and some of the applications of that. Um, Stephen, if you would uh, just share with us um, a few of the interesting or perhaps more diverse uh, uses of next or applications of next generation mobility that you covered in your talk. Yes, I thought, you know, one of the ones that really struck me was uh, the headline in US Today, USA Today, Dog Days for the Wearable Technology, uh, Mobile Pet Tracking, Long-Term Health of Mobile pet, pet Tracking. But anything from that through much more um, serious applications, if I may, uh, may say so, to do with mobile health through the use of drones for um, uh, domestic use as well. It's uh, uh, a wonderful picture from Parrot of their new... Um, of a new domestic drone. Some quite interesting technologies there. Good. And you talked a lot about standardisa standardization and the importance of this. Um, and your, your particular area of specialization is uh, mobile transactions. Uh, could you say a little bit about the um, where standards are actually present in mobile transactions today and uh, where these are moving? Yeah. Certainly, yes. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of mobile transactions um, are relating to financial, um, financial transactions, so payments, uh, mobile banking. And obviously, these have, there's been a long history of um, trying to make these as secure as possible, driven by the fact that where there is money, then people will aim to, uh, the people with a malicious attend, uh, intent uh, will, will try to get to it. So there's been a lot of activity there driven by organizations such as Visa, MasterCard, EMV, etc. And that is now transferring over into the mobile uh, arena, into the smartphone arena, um, as the technology moves from separate cards onto the, uh, onto, the, onto the smartphone itself. That opens up a whole new range um, of challenges because, of course, the smartphone is not inherently a secure device uh, unless you go out and make it so. Good. And now standardization is a, is a um, standardization and uh, disruptiveness of technology is a, a somewhat in, in concurrence. Um, there's this process of, of disruption as technology, uh, new potential uh, starts to become uh, available in prototypes, uh, products. Um, and then, of course, in order for the uh, a broad category of uh, products to succeed and everybody in the in industry to benefit, the standardization is at some stage necessary. When is the right time for the standard people to get involved? It's an interesting question. I think actually uh, if you want to be agile you need to have and uh, you need to be thinking about standardization at a very early at a very early stage. Uh, that can then help you to design out uh, some of the problems. Um, if, you, if standards aren't involved uh, at an early stage, you can end up developing a solution which is uh, very difficult to guarantee interoperability or very difficult to uh, guarantee security. And we've seen that with some of the older financial systems which were um, designed before the age of the modern hacker and then you've had to have security bolted on as an afterthought. Whereas now we see with newer systems where security is built in from the start, it's possible to make it, uh, it's possible to make it more secure. Of course, as I said, you can never make anything absolutely secure. The important thing is uh, to be looking at where is the weakest link in the network, to make sure you focus on that weakest link or the weakest links and make them secure enough so that people actually go and attack other parts of the system. And a uh, final question, and I suppose you could say that standardization is a, a little bit like a, a, a good waiter. When, when it works, nobody really notices it. Um, but when something goes wrong, everybody can blame it. Can you think of any spectacular failures, in, perhaps in the last uh, few years or last decades, uh, where standardization has, has got it wrong? Um, I think it's not so much that where standardization has got it wrong, but actually where perhaps standardization has been too late um, or has not been properly or adequately enforced. I think an example of this is that we are now much, much more conscious of the impact of the mobile phone on human health. 
uh, in the early days of the mobile phone, phones were producing really quite high levels of radiation into the body. Um, and it took quite some time for the standards body and for the regulators to get to, uh, to, to realise this and actually to bring in appropriate regulations. I think you hear about regulations called SAR, um, which are about ensuring that the levels of radiation into the human body are at a level which doesn't affect human, human tissue. I think that's an example where, with hindsight, we would have done a lot more, uh, a lot more sooner um, uh, th than actually happened in practice. Good. Well, it just remains for me to thank um, Stephen Kirk from UL, uh, the, uh, the WISE group, and uh, thank you once again for a, a stimulating talk and for taking the time to speak with us right now. Thank you.